It's so prevalent to identify as genderqueer or male to female trans in the brony community, there's even a meme about it. That feeling when you were a brony in 2012, either become a white supremacist or become a trans girl. First, obvious one being trans girls. And it turns out that those friends and myself weren't the only ones who had the exact same pipeline reaction to opening up themselves to their own personal identities. There's an unprecedented number of genderqueer and trans-identifying people in the My Little Pony, or Brony, community. In fact, in 2015 alone, over 4.4% of bronies surveyed in the brony census identified as genderqueer or transgender. The general population has more than twice the amount of homosexual people than trans or genderqueer people. However, as compared with the general population, in the brony community, more people identify as trans or genderqueer than people who identify as homosexual in the community. Just a little comparison to show just how prevalent it is to be transgender in the brony community and not just queer. The brony census survey ended in 2015. But the number of genderqueer and transgender identifying people in the brony community has undoubtedly increased since then. I speculate it has increased to at least 5.5 to 7 percent. However, in the general population, according to the 2021 Pew Research Center survey, only 1.6 percent of people identify as genderqueer or trans, making the brony trans and genderqueer population around four times the amount of the general population. This rapid and enormous growth of transgender and genderqueer people in the brony community and my personal experiences within the community may suggest a portion of these people are not trans at all. At the very least, I personally know two detransitioners from the Bruni community who realized that they were not trans. So who's to say there aren't or won't be more people coming out as not trans at all? These people should have gotten better treatment or health care for any other possible mental issues or disorders. It's especially because of these two detransitioners I know and a man who I think is misappropriating trans culture, I want to look further into questioning others in the Brony community who are transitioning or identifying as genderqueer because statistically speaking, it seems unlikely I should personally know two people who are detransitioners who detransition because they aren't trans. Something seems amiss and there are hypotheses that there are more people than statistics tell us who aren't trans at all, even though they identify as such. Ever since 2014, when I first heard about genderqueer and transgender activism and all the things that came with it, I didn't question anything I was told concerning pronouns and the idea that people were able to be transgender or genderqueer if they chose to, and the right for anyone and everyone to identify as whoever they wanted and deserve to transition if they wanted to medically. It wasn't until 2017 to 2018 I started to see a pattern of the increase in prevalence of trans and genderqueer identifying people, especially in the brony community I was a part of. That's when I wondered if there was something more happening than merely a whole bunch of closeted trans people coming out. I wish to add my voice to the ongoing debate of whether or not outside factors such as social contagion, rapid onset gender dysphoria, mental health issues, intellectual disorders, learning disorders, unmanaged disorders such as autism spectrum disorders, personality disorders, or ADHD or PTSD, etc., can influence someone to question or change their identity, perhaps even incorrectly so, and to mistakenly go down the path of medical transition, or to assume identifying as genderqueer is the answer to addressing their mental issues and problems they face with disorders. Of course, gender dysphoria isn't included on this list as it's widely accepted to be the number one reason for a person to transition. My secondhand experiences with people who identify as genderqueer or trans, especially in the brony community, 
seem to align with a lot of these ideas. There have been many instances of the misdiagnosis of gender dysphoria or hasty gender affirmation where the patient needed treatment for other disorders or mental health issues, especially when attempting medical transition as an answer to other issues, it can pose real mental and physical problems for those who aren't truly trans. I wish to present my experiences concerning adults who identify as genderqueer or transgender, since much of the discourse around questioning transgender and genderqueer people is about children. I believe adults deserve the same amount of care as children do, whether they are or aren't trans or genderqueer, and they should receive the right medical treatment so they don't have to undergo physically and mentally altering hormone replacement therapy if they don't have to. As said by an adult detransitioner on YouTube, transitioning was sold to me as a hardware fix for software issues. And I know this has been true for many people. I wish to emphasize that I am and always have been an ally for all LGBTQ people and their rights and acceptance. I am not a trans hater. I care. I do believe trans people are valid and I believe they do exist and that they should be respected and have their rights protected. I disagree with right-wing radicals who believe all trans people are invalid. I seek a moderate approach. I am not a whistleblower, I am not dog whistling for transphobes, I'm not calling for people who disagree with all trans people to use my experience as evidence to oppose all trans people. I don't believe trans people shouldn't get the treatment they need when it's necessary. I advocate for everyone's safety from true unlawful harassment and hate crimes. What I'm saying is not meant to be against trans or genderqueer people so much as asking the important questions about people who may be misusing their gender identities as a means to treat other disorders or mental issues apart from gender dysphoria, which can worsen their problems or cause them to forgo proper treatment. I also want to address that some people, like the person I will be addressing in this video, are people who will misuse or appropriate the trans culture in order to fit in or to escape being a cisgender white heterosexual male. To question something does not mean to oppose it. There's no denying that not all people who assume they're trans are actually trans, and that's where my concerns lie. Not to mention, we can't predict how many people, anywhere from 2 to 10 years later or more, may regret their transition. We have no solid statistics to account for this most recent trend of trans and genderqueer identifying people in the last five years because it can take time for someone to realize they're not trans. For those who don't know, the Brony community is a fan community for the cartoon My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. They call themselves bronies, as in a pony bro, in reference to the fact that community is mostly men whose average age is 25 to 27. I also want to point out that while the brony community is very open to queer people in general, there wasn't any sort of precedent of it being a specifically transgender friendly community where they would invite transgender people to come into their space. Not to mention most people who are in the Brony community identifying as genderqueer or trans seem to have identified as such after joining the community in the first place. I will now be sharing my experiences in the Brony community with you as they pertain to the prevalence of people identifying as transgender or genderqueer within the Brony community. I joined the Brony community in 2013 and thought it was a great place where people were accepting and kind and wanted to make friends with everyone. It wasn't great, and I don't suggest joining. I and countless others left the community due to its toxic nature because many bronies have untreated mental health issues and unmanaged disorders. Their symptoms cause terrible problems for others, even from some of the most well-meaning bronies. 
It seems many of them self-medicated by enjoying the cute happy show and by joining a community about friendship instead of seeking professional help and creating real meaningful bonds with others. I also began to wonder if their self-medicating also involved identifying as trans or genderqueer because of how prevalent it had become. Not to mention, it is a community full of men who are enjoying My Little Pony. And from my experience, many of these men are pretty misogynist. So it would make sense that a lot of them think that they are trans or genderqueer because they like feminine things. Or they feel like they resonate more with women because they think that they have to be a certain stereotype in order to be a man. Not to mention, for a lot of bronies, My Little Pony show is a big part of their lives. And all of those characters are females. And all of the male characters in the show are either lesser or you just don't see them very much or you can't really relate to them. So I think that plays a pretty big role as well as to how these bronies identify themselves as more of a woman because their favorite characters in a show that they identify with are women. I didn't make this video to slam the brony community. If I wanted to do that, I would have made one. Many of the bronies, including genderqueer and trans bronies, ended up being my friends and still are. So I'm not saying there are no good people in the community. It's just that the toxicity outweighs any positives and I have to be honest about my negative experiences. Not to mention, just because someone has some problems, uh, mental issues, or unmanaged disorders, doesn't necessarily mean they're a bad person either. I just wanted to point out that many bronies have some real issues to deal with pertaining to PTSD, autism, ADHD, mental health issues, etc. I'm not the only one to point this out. There have been many discussions online and between me and others in the community about the prevalence of disorders and mental health issues in the brony community. Furthermore, I want to point out that the autism spectrum disorders are so common in the brony community that many bronies, even ones with autism, exaggeratingly joke about how all bronies are autistic. Autism has been linked to genderqueer and transgender identity, and this has been proven. There are theories that people with unmanaged autism may believe that they have a trans identity. Doctors need to do a better job of treating or directing patients to resources to help patients manage their issues instead of affirming their gender as a means of coping with their problems. And that hormone replacement therapy and surgery should be a last resort. Around 2018, I began to question the validity of the new identities of my friends and acquaintances because of the unusually increasing amount of those identifying as genderqueer or trans in the brony community. I can't even begin to count how many trans and genderqueer identifying bronies I have come across over the years, at conventions and on social media. Counting those people whom I saw in passing, whom I spoke to briefly, or people that I knew personally. I do know that I was acquainted or friends with, people I had met or spoken to on more than a couple of occasions, 9 to 11 or more male to female trans bronies including two who transitioned and then detransitioned one to two years into hormone replacement therapy. I was also acquainted with or friends with 12 to 16 or more bronies who identified as genderqueer, some of whom are also on hormone replacement therapy. It's so prevalent to identify as genderqueer or male to female trans in the brony community that there's even a meme about it, and the genderqueer and trans bronies love it. They don't even question why this is a thing. It says, that feeling when you were a brony in 2012, and it shows a forked path of two rows to either become a white supremacist or become a trans girl. 
Yeah, the white supremacist thing was also true in some instances. This is where the toxic behavior came in some ways where racist jokes ended up making people actually racist. So weirdly, a similar thing seems to have happened with the transgender women in the community, where it was a meme and then it became real, and it goes to show you how there are way more male to female trans women in the Brony community than what's considered normal. If people in the Brony community are lost enough to let a few racist jokes make them a white supremacist, who's to say that there isn't some form of social contagion when it comes to them identifying as trans women? Ten years later, this meme was not only reposted by No Whacking, a trans man figure in the Brony community, it has over 23,000 likes, most of which seem to be coming from pro-trans people agreeing that so many bronies are coming out as trans as if it's a positive thing, but not something to be questioned more critically. It's so prevalent that discussions within the community have been started online about how a large portion of bronies are genderqueer. And these discussions are started by people who themselves are genderqueer. There are even trans bronies who are calling this effect the brony pipeline. I kid you not. Where you go into the fandom as a usually straight cis man and come out the other side as a queer trans woman. I found two trans women's testimonies on YouTube who call this phenomenon the brony pipeline, where you go into the fandom as a usually straight cis man and come out the other side as a queer trans woman. I was able to basically just look at myself coming into the series and see a completely different person to the person I am now who has come out of that show but still resonates very strongly with that fan. And to this day, I still manage to find people who were somehow connected to Friendship is Magic and the fandom it produced, often more than not being members of the varying LGBT spectrum, but of course the various obvious one being trans girls. In fact, in a bit of ironic IRL foreshadowing moment for yours truly, I've known about five people that I knew from the fandom in my early years, some of whom I even went to high school with that ended up transitioning years into knowing them, and I often cite people such as them for coming out before I had even begun to consider it for finally making me realize that it was a very real thing. And it turns out that those friends and myself weren't the only ones who had the exact same pipeline reaction to opening up themselves to their own personal identities. And it turns out that a majority of the people involved with the fandom at large ended up going down the same rabbit hole themselves. I did uh, content creation, music, rapping, vocals in the Brony fandom under the name Melody Sky. My experiences with being trans in the fandom started around, I want to say like 2017. It was around the time that like a few, a, a few high profile people were starting to, starting to come out. Um, I distinctly remember Forest Rain. I always knew the word trans. I was never taught that it was something that you could just be. So to see people just like starting to come out, speak their truth, I started like internet 2017 looking into uh, what being trans was. With this sort of thing in mind, it really does seem like there is some con social contagion happening within the Brony community. Next, I want to tell my own experiences with the people I was acquainted with who were either trans or genderqueer identifying in the brony community. All but one of them appeared to transition or identify as genderqueer only after joining the brony community. I want to get it straight that I am not by any means saying all of the people I'm going to talk about are not trans or genderqueer. 
I'm merely questioning to express that some of these people have aligned with much of what the discourse about mistaken trans identity is saying. Of course, two of these people are definitely not trans, as they did detransition, and they know and have made known they are not women. One of which I want to express made use of what seems to be dangerous resources to get hormones without a prescription. Some of the others may also be undiagnosed or unknown to me as I have come across several undiagnosed people in the community and autism was especially prevalent. I do speculate at least that there is a presence of other mental health issues or disorders for some of the people I'm going to talk about. Moving on to talking about a few of the people I've come to know in the Brony community. The ones I'm talking about here are just a handful of the ones I know, and I'm here to just express the possibilities that their gender identity is influenced by something other than actually being trans. That isn't to say all of these people aren't trans, but it seems all too convenient for so many to identify as such in such a short amount of time in the same community. Of course, I will respect the following people's pronouns because I can't know for sure if they are trans or are not. First off is Purple Tinker, who's a trans woman in the Brony community. She's the most well-known transgender person because she founded the largest and most famous BronyCon convention in 2011. At the end of the inception of the convention, there weren't many people who identified as transgender or genderqueer. She was one of, if not the only, notable trans person at the time. She was definitely at the forefront of the community in terms of acceptance of transgender and genderqueer people, going far to ensure anti-trans bronies were dealt with. However, some would say she has sometimes gone too far in her methods. She's most recently known for getting limited run games employee, Kara Lynn, fired for liking tweets and following accounts such as Blair White, a trans woman against the medical transitioning of children. Whether or not you believe Kara's being fired was justified or not, I want to point out Purple Tinker has been known to be an aggressive bully in the brony community, even by other transgender and genderqueer bronies. She has even issued an apology for her aggressive behavior and left Twitter for this reason. I've met her and I find she has an anger problem and seems to be depressed and has anxiety based on the amount of negativity I've seen on her Twitter account and from what I've heard about her from others. She also seems to be incredibly insecure and lost. At her core, she seems to have the best intentions, but it seems she has severe mental health problems that cause the, the outburst that she has. According to Rhetoric for Gender Affirming Care, transitioning should help a lot with depression and anxiety. However, as the years have progressed while being on hormone replacement therapy, she has reportedly declined mentally and emotionally based on her social media and the interactions that people have had with her. It's clear she has other mental issues unrelated to her transition. Another well-known figure in the Brony community who transitioned is No Whacking or Jesse, who's a trans man. And Jesse transitioned after they had joined the Brony community and also left it. He was a fan voice actor for My Little Pony fan videos and became a well-known favorite for a female character. He left the brony community for a time, but was still connected to others in the community and even attended some cons thereafter as a guest. It's no secret that, as a woman, Jessie received a lot of unwanted sexual attention and sexual trauma and was very depressed. While it seems Jessie became happier after transitioning, Many biological female detransitioners have often said 
they use transitioning to a man as a way to deal with their trauma of sexual assault and sexual harassment. Did Nowakking's depression and sexual trauma cause him to question his gender? That's not to say the two could be separate from one another, but it's a possibility. Next is Jessa Stebbins, the trans woman musician known as Odyssey Eurobeat. She is a very well-known transgender Burmese musician. She had also left for a time like Jesse, but she was always connected to the musician group that formed within the community and attended conventions often. Jessa wasn't the only and not the first Brony musician to transition male to female or identify as genderqueer. So many people in the musician group transitioned male to female or identified as genderqueer that it became a joke that it was just a matter of time before all of them were either non-binary or trans. Is this the result of some form of social contagion within the musician group? One of my friends was a Rooney musician in this group and they had a lot of social anxiety to the point where they hardly wanted to leave their house and suffered body dysmorphia, most likely from their morbid obesity. They eventually ended up being one of, if not the only cis heterosexual white man in the musician group because of so many people identifying as trans or genderqueer in the group. And this friend even told me that they felt guilty for being the only wealthy, white, cis, heterosexual man in the group. Being the person who was part of the oppressor group of cis, white, heterosexual men made him feel privilege guilt. So some months later, they lost their virginity to a brony musician trans man. And from there, they began identifying as pansexual instead of straight, identifying as non-binary, they, them, instead of he, him, and dyed their hair a bright color, started wearing makeup, and even began to wear a bra for their obesity-caused boobs. Did their guilt of being a wealthy cisgender heterosexual white man and their want to fit into the musician group caused them to change so drastically? Did they succumb to social contagion? They're the kind of person who didn't like conflict and was a coward. So in my opinion, it's very likely they did so out of cowardice for being someone who is identified as part of the oppressive group of people when they're surrounded by a bunch of homosexual, genderqueer, and trans people in their friend group. I can confidently say that this person is almost certainly appropriating trans culture out of privilege guilt, wanting to have a sense of belonging, and wanting to find a way to cope with their social and bodily anxieties. This is the kind of man that I and many others take issue with. Someone who is very privileged in every way, who is appropriating trans culture to their benefit. Another person I knew who was in the Brony Musician friend circle was a biological female who identified as he him. However, he didn't go on hormone replacement therapy and didn't do anything to alter his appearance other than sometimes wearing clothing that would be considered androgynous. He also has long effeminate hair, very large breasts that he doesn't attempt to hide, and often wears very feminine makeup. Not only that, he cosplayed often as female characters, placing his boobs prominently on display. Now, knowing what I've known for a while about gender dysphoria, it didn't make sense to me that this biological female would consider themselves a he-him and continue to have a feminine hairstyle, feminine makeup, and have their feminine body qualities on display 
and having little to no problem with the use or misuse of his pronouns. And because of this, it seems almost pointless to have he, him pronouns in the first place. At the end of the day, it just seemed like the pronouns didn't matter. This person also appeared to have issues with others and with himself as evidence on their social media. He was very inciting and often took things too far. He was always complaining about his problems as well. This is yet another person in the community who needed some form of mental health assistance, where perhaps gender dysphoria was not one of his issues. Another friend of mine is someone who, when I met them, was a they-them biological female. They began to take testosterone for a couple of years, but have since said that they changed their pronouns back to she, they, as evidenced by their want to have children. During the time I've known her, she told me she has an autism spectrum disorder, has PTSD from child sexual abuse, in addition to telling me she has an estranged relationship with her mother, and that she even joined a cult in her past. So her past traumas, vulnerability to join a cult, vacillation between pronouns and hormone replacement therapy, and the want to give physical birth to a child, make me wonder if she has true gender dysphoria, but has unresolved issues. Because like I said before, a lot of deep transitioners have cited that they felt the need to transition in some measure because of their past traumas. Obviously, to state again that a lot of detransitioners cite such traumas as reasons to feel like they want to transition. Not to mention, people have theorized that people who are vulnerable or more likely to succumb to social contagion, such as people who would join cults. The next two friends I had in the Bruni community that I'm going to talk about are men who officially detransitioned. Both started hormone replacement therapy to transition into women and also dressed as women. Both have detransitioned, but not from a lack of support as suggested by some people in the trans movement, but because they realized they weren't women. Between the community as a whole and their friends, they actually had a lot of support in their transition to begin with, and neither of them lived with anyone who would object. Even mutual friends besides me questioned them being trans, but still trusted that the two men would do what they thought would make them happy. The first friend began transitioning during the time he was in a relationship with a man, and then shortly after they broke up, he detransitioned. I was personally very supportive and encouraging of this person in his transition, which occurred about one to two years. As someone who hardly knew him, I didn't see anything off about his transitioning, whereas his longer time friends watched in doubt, and rightfully so. He later revealed the hormones messed him up and caused a lot of mental and physical anguish for him, something many other detransitioners talk about in their experiences. He even stopped talking to me during his detransition. This all just goes to show that if someone is transitioning without proper assessment, they could be needlessly suffering from negative physical and mental side effects from hormone replacement therapy. Not to mention, as someone who knew him generally, but not for long, it seemed to me he actually was a trans woman. But the fact was, he isn't. And that just shows us that just because someone seems like they're trans doesn't mean they actually are. I never asked why he transitioned in the first place, and I didn't know all that much about him. 
but I do wonder if his transitioning had to do with him having a boyfriend at the time, possibly feeling like he had to be a woman to be dating a man. But my mutual friend who knows him better says he doesn't have any idea as to the reason why. He's most likely just an effeminate man in general. Many men in the Brony community, as you can imagine, have a feminine side to them, or otherwise, they'd not enjoy My Little Pony. Thus, some men may mistake their effeminate nature with being a woman. The second guy who transitioned and detransitioned likes to cross-dress and caught on to the social media fetish craze of femboys which was a term for men who like to cross-dress and make themselves look very effeminate, usually for sexual reasons. And he was also bisexual. He didn't go through any formal assessment for transitioning, and instead found guidance online to get hormones unlawfully shipped to him. He, like many others in the Brony community, has autism, depression, and anxiety. I do wonder if this person's unmanaged autism and depression led him down this path, or if he wanted to fulfill some fetish of being a femboy to look more feminine by taking hormones. Which is a completely weird and even creepy reason to transition. I want to point out how disturbing it is he was able to get help online to get hormones without a prescription. I don't know how common this practice is in the brony community or elsewhere, but I've seen videos online even telling people to lie to clinicians to get the prescriptions for the hormones they want, which in some ways is kind of the same thing. So this practice of getting hormones without a proper diagnosis or prescription can be very harmful to do or to encourage. I want to note that three or more people I know as acquaintances who I know for a fact also have autism spectrum disorders and depression or anxiety also identify as trans or genderqueer. There are just way too many people in the Brony community who identify as trans or genderqueer who are also autistic and also have some other disorders or mental health issues. Whenever I was looking for pictures of people in the community, I stumbled upon at least two more people who I was unaware of who were transgender or genderqueer. The number is rising. It really is very unprecedented. One of those people I stumbled across was another male to female trans woman who is in the Brony Musician group. And not only does she have autism spectrum disorders, she also had the same fetish I spoke about earlier that my friend who detransitioned had, which was the femboy fetish. There are some people who do cross-dress for sexual purposes because they love the idea of them being a woman sexually, and that is not the same thing as transgenderism. That's three things that I've already mentioned that this person has in common with some of the previous people that I spoke about. In fact, she has two of the traits that my friend who is a detransitioner had. I sort of wonder the autism crossed with the social contagion and this fetish. Does she actually have autogynephilia where she gets off to the idea of being a woman sexually? Has her autistic traits and being in the brony musician group caused her to question her gender? I just want you to know that I do not think treatment should be taken away from trans people, but patients should be assessed for different mental issues and disorders, and medical transitioning should be a last resort in case transitioning isn't the answer for them specifically. 
This is a conclusion I came to myself after the above experiences. I didn't know others had come to this conclusion too until about two years ago. But now I am adding my voice to the other voices who are speaking on this topic. Of course, I'm all for social transitioning at the very least, as long as the person isn't ignoring their personal issues which could cause themselves and others a lot of problems. I want to be clear that I'm not singling out just people who claim they're trans who have other mental issues. I just don't think anyone with mental issues should be trying to treat their issues with something that isn't right for them. My only discrepancy and main point is that there seems to be more and more people who identify as transgender who truly aren't trans and are just confused and need real help. Or in other cases, perhaps someone is actually trans, but instead of getting help for their other issues, they're told or falsely assume that transitioning will be a cure-all for their symptoms of mental illness. I am not saying this applies to all or even most trans people. I want others to realize that there may be something to the idea of social contagion in relation to transgender and genderqueer identification based on my own experiences in the Brony community. In the Brony community, there's an unprecedented rapid growth of people who identify as transgender or genderqueer. There's probably somewhere around 5 to 7% of bronies who now identify as genderqueer or transgender from the 4.4% of people who identified as such in 2015. That statistic is four times the amount of genderqueer and transgender identifying people in the general population. Is it things like this that cause so many people to question that so many people are identifying as transgender or genderqueer and even questioning whether or not this sort of thing is really just social contagion. I have witnessed these numbers myself being in the Brony community and witnessed several people's stories who identify as transgender or genderqueer. A large portion of bronies are also neurodivergent, have PTSD, have borderline personality disorders, depression, anxiety, etc. Many people are now questioning whether or not the issues arising from these disorders and mental health problems contribute to the mistaken idea of being transgender. Thus, mistaken trans identity can be an issue in light of medical transition or using identifying as genderqueer as a form of self-medication that doesn't truly address any underlying mental issues or unmanaged disorder. Or, as I've said before, some people may even be appropriating trans culture for their own benefit. I wish to add my voice and experiences when it comes to the question of whether or not mental issues or other factors influence people to mistakenly think they're transgender or genderqueer. Several ramifications give cause for concern for the rapid growth of transgender and genderqueer identifying people, but I won't get into them in this video because that would be a whole video in itself. Just know I have my reasons to question all of this and to care about my friends and care about people going through issues which may not even be because they're trans or genderqueer and that I want them to get the proper support and care for their needs, whether it's because they are trans or aren't. This is just me presenting my experiences and questioning it all. As I said before, this is not evidence for people to use against all trans people. No one has my permission to use anything I say here as evidence against trans people. I'm not a whistleblower. I am not dog whistling. I support all queer and trans people in their journeys, but I question some who may be seeking the wrong treatment for the wrong thing in their lives. That's all. Not everyone who says they're trans is actually trans. 
and that's a fact. I do support trans rights, and just because I question this recent rapid increase does not mean I don't think trans people are not valid. It was really tough for me to do this video, as I knew this could cause a lot of people to be upset with me. But I want people to know I come from a place of concern. I'm sure this isn't just happening in the Brony community, it could be happening in many other communities as well. Thank you for listening and for being open to hearing what I'm saying and what I've experienced in all of this. Please comment below if you've had similar experiences as I have had in your own circles and communities when it pertains to people identifying as genderqueer or transgender. I'd love to hear your stories. And please like and maybe subscribe if you want to, but I'm not sure whether or not I'll continue to make videos. Good night and good luck.